What is up guys, this is SC2 back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel OS. This is the 31st December 2023 built, the latest one as of right now and the last time I tried this it was in beta but right now it is official build. The changelog you can notice there is network traffic indicator right now and there is quick unlock and there is also scramble pin layout and there is also the ripple effect kind of thing for unlocking. It has the MIUI camera so that's really nice. I'll show you every detail of this ROM so let's begin. Of course, the flashing guide for this particular ROM will be present in the description. In terms of the Android version, this is how it looks like. It is based on Android 14, so that's nice to see. And we have the security patch as December 5th, 2023. We have the stock kernel as the 4.14 Vantam kernel. By the way, these are the stock apps which are present in this ROM, except the fresh walls, Pixart, etc. Because I was restoring my Google App Data Backup. That's why these two are there. And while I was restoring my Google App Data Backup, let me tell you one thing that it supports the wireless kind of App Data Backup from a different device. You just scan a QR code and then it starts restoring. There is also the battery information seeing option in here. You will see the cycle count right now for my device. The cycle count shows as 345 cycles. Now let's go into the system settings. This is how it looks like. We have the language, the keyboard and the gesture settings right here. And we have the quick open camera and stuff. Let me go back. We have the navigation mode as well. If you go into the settings of it. So swipe to invoke assistant is also there. And as you can see, if I just swipe up from the corners, as you can see, the Google Assistant is working perfectly fine. And we have the left edge, right edge customization right here. Then we also have the hide gesture bar. So if you want to hide this pill bar, you can, but there is no thickness or length customization for this pill bar. This is how it is in Pixel OS. The customizations are there, but they are very minimal. We have the three button navigation and in the settings of it, we have the hold for assistant and the inward layout. We have the one handed boot working perfectly fine. We have the press and hold power button action as usual. We also have the enable advanced restart option right here. Then we have the swipe critic screenshot and this is actually working fine as you can see share edit and the delete option and we have the playback control the quick torch is also there then we have the double tap to check phone as well then the prevent ringing option is there let me go back there is a system updater so that you can check for updates from right here also if you scroll down even more you will get a thermal profiles and from here you can set per apps thermal profile to this benchmark browser camera dialer gaming navigation streaming and the videos profile so whatever you want you can customize it from right here so that's pretty much it about the system settings let me talk about the home screen this is how it looks like yes you can change the wallpapers by just tapping and holding and the animation just notice how smoothly it works and if you go into the wallpapers and styles and in the more settings in the wallpapers you will get the ai wallpapers you can select whichever you want to then there is a mineral section and the living universe so the live wallpapers and stuff you can download them simply from here and we have the community lens so pretty much pixel kind of wallpapers are there that you can notice from here and let me go back we have the themed icons and the app grid is there up to five by five then in the lock screen we have the lock screen clocks of android 14 and just notice plethora of clocks are there in terms of the android 14 lock screen clocks i have been using it with this one we have the shortcuts the left and right shortcut of lock screen you can customize then we have the show notification on lock screen and there is more settings for the lock screen customization and by the way talking about the home screen settings this is a pixel launcher present right out of the box you can disable the suggestions but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and in case you want to add widgets let me show you so you can add basically any widget that you are looking for and just notice the animations with those are working perfectly fine to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page they are working smoothly and here let me show you swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will get you to the quick setting or the notification panel and this quick setting panel stays dark even in the light theme as you can see everywhere it's just a really really smooth experience no issues so far talking about the quick setting panel toggles yes you can edit and add multiple toggles from here just notice the other options which are there by the way, I have the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, the flash light and stuff. Everything is working. Dark theme always on display. Yes, you can toggle it on or off from here. We have the device controls, the Google Home controls pretty much. Auto rotate and there is the battery saver. The screen recording is there. And these are the features for those. And we have the anti flicker the night light, hotspot, data saver, extra dim and the heads up. Then we have the live display customization. Do not disturb airplane mode, alarm and the security kind of stuff are also present. And here in terms of the power menu, this is how it looks like. And as I have the advanced reboot enabled, I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now, in terms of the settings, this is how it looks like again. And in the network settings and stuff, we have the network traffic indicator right now. So you can enable it if you want to. In terms of the app section, we have the cloned app. So the dual apps feature is actually there. You just hit plus and it will create a separate account for that particular app. So you can use two accounts of WhatsApp or Facebook. In terms of notifications, there is the bubbles feature and there is also the flash notification option. You can try that. It should be working fine. 
And now let's talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like. And we have the battery usage, the battery saver, and the battery percentage you can enable. This is for the status bar actually, and you can enable or disable it from right here. We have the battery estimates in quick setting panel. There is also this charging control, but if you enable that, your fast charging speeds will lower down. So if you wanna use fast charging, just disable this particular option. We have the battery widget as well. So if you just tap here, you can add that in your home screen and yes the battery widget is also working perfectly fine no need to worry about it clicking on it does get you into the battery settings and as i said the charging cycles are present in the about section in the bottom of the battery settings you do not get any kind of battery temperature seeing option or the capacity and stuff does not show up in this battery settings now let's talk about the battery life i have tested that with this aku battery app and with that, it's actually showing a lot less battery life, but I had the device standby for almost two days. And here, if you are noticing the screen off actually shows as 20 days. This is not hours. This is 20 days and 23 hours, so almost 21 days. Yes, that's a exaggerated number, but let me actually tell you, it can definitely last you two or three days if you're putting this device on standby. And the standby drain is much, much less in this particular ROM that I have been noticing. So yeah, if you want the most amount of battery life, Pixel OS is one I would suggest. And the combined use shows as 13 days. So that's again a huge amount of number. These are all estimated numbers, guys. And in the health section, it shows weirdly that my battery health is at only 46%. This is simply not true. So I think this is a bug or something like that. But yeah, my battery health, I know it's not great, but it's not 46% that I know. And even with that, you can get six to seven hours of screen on time without any problems. And yes, you do not need to worry about fast charging here. That is working fine here. Talking about basic stuff, yes, in Play Store it shows device is certified, so that's a good thing. Also the safety net passes right out of the box here. And here is the play integrity check, but yeah, banking apps will be working perfectly fine here, no need to worry about it. The IR Blaster is also working perfectly fine here. The DM info of this ROM shows as L1, so that you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And in terms of Google Photos, this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos, you can see this feature from here. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Well, this is a MIUI camera present right out of the box. Yes, all the lenses with this is actually working fine. 1x, 2x options and the 0.6x. But let's talk about videos. Well, if I switch to it, you will see if I have selected 60 fps it will totally stop working. As you can see right now, it's not moving and it will give you kind of a glitch. So yeah, this is a bug that is present over here. So if you are someone who is going to use or flash Pixel OS, do note that 1080p 60fps may not work for your Redmi Note 10 Pro. But otherwise, the 4K 30fps and the 1080p 30fps both should be working fine. As you can see, even the 4K 30fps is working and the 1080p 30fps is working. So anything related to 60fps may not work. But otherwise, there are the pro mode videos and all, and you can shoot again up to 4K 30fps. But again, 1080p 60fps may not work. And there is a documents mode and stuff. You can shoot enhanced mode pictures. And the portrait mode is also working perfectly fine. And if I switch to the front camera, as you can see, the front camera is also working fine. No need to worry about it. So yeah, having the MIUI camera right out of the box, it's a really great thing. But I wish there was 1080p 60fps video working. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the media call ring, it's to volume controls. And the vibration haptics are there. And the in-call vibration options are there. Then we have the default alarm sound and the dial pad tone, screen locking sound etc we also have the dolby atmos right here and i have been using it with dynamic then the equalizer preset you can change also then we have the dialogue enhancer and the volume lever and stuff you can actually enable there is a clear speaker option and there is also the haptic feedback and this is where you can actually adjust the haptic feedback of the whole ui in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level adaptive brightness and the lock screen is there and we have the use device control and the shortcuts dynamic clock and the ambient display options and in here, we have the pickup option. I'll show you if it's working or not. And there is the privacy kind of settings. The screen timeout is there up to 30 minutes. There is also the screen attention and the dark theme is there. And there is the use black theme or pitch black option for the dark theme. Display size and text is there. And in terms of the icon manager, we have the headset, Bluetooth, that's the kind of icons enabling option. Then we have the nightlight, the live display, the colors, you can change it to boosted, adaptive or normal. Smooth display is there. And we have the force refresh at peak. And we have the double tap to sleep and the double tap to wake both on the storage bar and lock screen. We have the full screen app so you can set particular apps to full screen from right here. And by the way, the auto brightness is actually working fine. Let me actually re-enable it. And if I just hop out the top part of the screen, as you can see, the brightness dims down. And if I just move my hand, now the brightness has increased. So yes, auto brightness is actually working fine. No need to worry about it. In the security settings, this is how it looks like. If I go into the device unlock and the settings, we have the enhanced pin privacy, the quick unlock, scramble pin layout. Every feature is right now there. We have this lock screen timeout again. Let me go back. We also have the fingerprint and face unlock. 
and face and fingerprint I have added both and the more settings yes there is no app lock for now so you have to bear with that so let me actually show you the locking and unlocking stuff and for that I'll just double tap to sleep and the phone actually goes to sleep I have the always on display turned off and if I just put the device on the disk I'm just trying to show you the pickup gesture and if I just pick it up on my hand it shows the clock in the always on display kind of mode so ambient display pickup gesture is actually working fine and if I just try to unlock as you can see it unlocks let me just enable the always on display for now and in terms of the ripple effect if you want to take a closer look just notice how beautiful it looks for the face unlock i have already set it up and in the lock screen i just have to point the device towards my face and it's unlocked let me try one more time as you can see it's already searching for face and in the lock screen I just have to point the device towards my face and it unlocks. So face unlock and the thing which can speed it's perfectly fine. Now let's talk about the performance. Well in terms of day to day performance I would say this is one of the best ROMs that you can flash because in pixel West, I have been noticing like switching between apps and stuff and opening apps closing apps and scrolling through them it's just a really great experience as you can see even in Twitter the scrolling it's perfectly working in 120Hz for sure. And as you can see, it's a very smooth experience, no problems whatsoever. And switching between apps is not a problem at all. It switches and most of the apps stays in memory. So no issues whatsoever. I would say this is definitely one of the best ROMs if in case you are looking for performance. And as you can see, the test website, it's still in memory. And here, if I just keep it for some time, it will reach about 90 plus FPS, I would say. In Redmi Note 10 Pro, it doesn't reach fully 120 FPS for some reason. But yeah, overall, I would say the performance here, it's great. No issues so far. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. And in the recents panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot, the select option. And if you just tap on app, you can go into the split top or split screen mode. And that actually is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. You can change the position of those apps just like this. So a very smooth experience overall. So what do I think about the latest Pixel OS on the Redmi Note 10 Pro? Well, I feel for the Redmi Note 10 Pro, this is one of the best ROMs that I have found. And if you want to taste Android 14, this is the one I will recommend. But yes, you do need to keep in mind about that 1080p 60fps bug with videos. If you're someone who takes a lot of 1080p 60fps videos, then I would say stay away from this ROM. Otherwise, if you're fine with 30fps 4K videos, you can definitely go for this ROM. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And please share it with your friends if you feel like. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.